And in this video, we'll be looking at the Power BI functions if, blank, and is blank. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. The PL300 exam is all about Microsoft Power BI. If you pass the Power BI exam, then you will be given the Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst Associate. Now, this is for you if you are a data analyst who wants to create easy to comprehend data visualizations to allow others to perform self-service analytics in the Power BI service and are proficient using Power Query or the M language and writing expressions by using DAX. The PL300 exam is in four broad categories. Prepare the data, model the data, visualize and analyze the data, and deploy and maintain assets. In the following video, we'll be looking at the if blank and is blank functions. And if I go into the study guide, you'll see that they form part of the shape and transform tables. So this video is taken from my Power BI course, which goes into all of the requirements of the PL300 exam. I hope you enjoy it. In this video, we're going to have a look at the if function. Now, I'm very concerned about these items selling for £4.99. So, I want a column which gives me, if an item sells for £4.99, what the quantity is. So, let's do that. So, if you know Excel, this is going to be fairly straightforward. So, new column. So, I'm going to call this quantity... 499. So my formula is if, and you notice that as soon as I start typing, the computer gives me the syntax. And you can see the syntax is just as it is in Excel. I could also have a look at some other functions which might be related to what I want. So I'm going to press tab, and that gives me the open bracket automatically. So if the quantity so I want the quantity, so the sales amount. And you notice clicking on it doesn't actually give me the field, so you will have to actually type it in. So if the quantity, so if the sales amount, beg your pardon, is equal to 4.99, then give me the order quantity. And if not, uh, well, let's say give me zero. Fairly straightforward. So click enter and we'll press enter. And there we can see it's a one where the quantity is 499 and a zero where it isn't. Now let's say I want to have a sales target. Every time I sell a £4.99 item, I want to have another one. So that's fairly straightforward. A new column. So we'll call this quantity 499 plus one. So that's the name of the column. And that's going to be the quantity 499 plus one. And success. So we can see that we can use calculated columns in other calculated columns. So where we have a one, in 499 or any value in fact we get one more than that now where it is not 499 ideally i don't want to see any quantity remember this is a quantity for my sales target of 499 items but you can see we do because we have a zero in the quantity 499 and zero plus one is one but ideally i don't want this to be a zero I want this to be something akin to null. I want this to be empty. So that then we have a null plus one equals null. So how can we do that? Well, you might say, well, Philip, surely all you need to do is say, if the quantity is equal to zero, then give me zero. Otherwise, give me that plus one. And I'll say, okay, that's fine as far as it goes. So now we have the right numbers. But now let's create a visualization based on this, a very simple one. What I'm going to do is just get the quantities 
I'll have this in a table, please, so I can see the figures and focus in. So you can see the quantities. Fine, that is the right answer. But let's change the quantities, or at least let's add new ones and change these for counts. And you can see that the answer is 60,398, a significant value because that's the number of rows we've got. And really, we don't want to include all of these zeros in the count. Additionally, if we had averages of these, then again, the average is going to be a really small amount. We don't want to include those, whereas what we've got are our list of ones. So let's try, and instead of making this zero, let's do what we would do in Excel. If this is equal to 499, then give me the order quantity. Otherwise, give me double quotation marks. That's how we do it in Excel. But that's not how we can do it in the DAX language. We can see that there is an error. Expressions that yield variant data types cannot be used to define calculated columns. What does that mean? Well, we are getting a number and we're getting a string and that is not allowed. That is a variant data type. So maybe we can just put in the word null. And again, you can see that doesn't happen. And I can't put null in quotation marks because it then calculates that as a string. So how can we do this? Well, we use a function that works with both numbers and strings and is called blank. Blank takes no arguments, just open, close bracket. And you can see in my list of Excel functions, of DAX functions, returns a blank. Very straightforward function. So let's see if this works. And now you can see it does work where the sales amount is 499, then we've got a one, and where it isn't, then we've got literally nothing. Now quantity four plus nine nine, uh, four ninety nine plus one, calculates a zero because it's saying, well, if the, this is equal to zero, then make it zero. So what it's doing is it's looking at this column and saying, well, what number is this? Because we're comparing it to zero. And that's not what we want. We want to say, is it a blank? You could do it that way, but it's much better if you say, is it actually a blank? As opposed to saying, is it a number? which happens to be zero. And we do this using a function code is blank. So this checks whether a value is in fact blank. And if it is, it gives you the true. And if it isn't, it gives you a false. Perfect for using in an if function. So here is my finished calculation. And again, just going to my spreadsheet, is blank, checks whether a value is blank and returns true or false. So now, when I have a look at this, if an item is £4.99, it gives me a 1 for the quantity, a 2 for my stretch quantity, but if it's blank, then the computer says, ah, it is blank, and add 1 to that, it's blank as well. So now let's see what result we now had. So remember, previously we had a count of 60,398 and an average of 0.15. But now we have a count of 8,827, which with no coincidence whatsoever is the same number of items that we have, which are £4.99. And we can see the average is one because every time we sell a £4.99, we sell just the one quantity. So blanks, they're very important for not using sums because sums are not affected by zeros, but by using counts for using averages because those are very affected for zeros. We previously had an average of 0.15, we've now got an average of one. We previously had a count of 60,000, we've now got a true count of 8,827. So blanks are recommended when you want the result to have no value, and then is blank can be used to check whether a figure is in fact blank as opposed to coincidentally being zero.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It comes from my best-selling Udemy PL300 certification course. So in around 27 hours, we will be looking at all four parts of the PL300 certification. Creating visualizations, get and transform data, refining the model, and the Power BI service. So this is for you if you want to learn about Power BI. And it's also for you if you want to take the PL300 certification. For example, Satskit says, I passed the DA100, that's the predecessor of the PL300 certification, with 100% in the visualization part, started with zero knowledge. But after finishing this course, it only took two days of preparation for the exam. So bit by bit, throughout these 40 something sections, we'll be going through and increasing your knowledge, building on your table visualizations while having a look at get and transform data or creating a data model and then uploading it into the Power BI service. If this would help you, then there is a link to this course in the description to this video. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, then please click on like and why not subscribe to this YouTube channel? That way you can be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you for watching and keep learning.